Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in continuation of the fourth week lecture. This is lecture number 19. We are already introduced with uh, dummy load and unit load method, but unless we solve uh, energy method problems, it is difficult. Uh, to understand properly that is the reason we will try to solve few more problems in this lecture. And you should keep it in mind that uh, the examples uh, solved in one method must be tried with other methods which will be covered in the uh, forthcoming lectures. So, before we go further it is better to have a recapitulation history of aircraft uh, already we have uh, done history of aircraft and aerospace structural analysis, various types of external loads, conceptual structural details that also we have done. How does it look like? Ribs, spar, frames, uh, long runs, all those things we are introduced and which portion carries what type of load and then uh, we are introduced to overall uh, source of load on an aircraft, how the loads come and uh, how what is flight envelope why do we need to maintain it and in design how does it help. Limit load, ultimate load all those things we have already discussed. Shear and moment on wing and fuselage of an aircraft has also been discussed. Those have been discussed in, in with examples and then we have discussed uh, problems related to truss, space structures especially landing gear, gear problem to cover uh, the space structures and then we got introduced with energy methods and we are continuing with that. So, today as it is uh, mentioned already that we will solve a few um, example problem. So, the first example if you look at uh, this example is uh, considering the a beam, uh, a cantilever beam, cantilever beam is loaded uh, uniformly with uniformly distributed load W Newton per meter as it is shown in the figure. And uh, you, you see uh, these problems we will be solving both uh, first by unit load method and then by dummy load method. But whatever uh, we do we need to need to consider that this uh, energy uh, strain energy uh, for bending this is predominantly a bending one we need to consider the bending energy and using the bending energy we can easily find out you either using unit load method or dummy load method what is the deflection so uh, to find out the tip deflection in this particular case free end or the tip tip deflection uh, in this particular case for to follow unit load method what are we doing? We are applying one unit load here. Once we apply the unit load here and accordingly we may find out m 0 and m 1. Here m x whatever is there without the unit load that is actually the m 0. And for this particular section and considering the uh, direction of moment shown as, as, as shown in the figure, we can easily say that the m 0 is w equals to x square by 2 w multiplied by x square by 2 and m 1 is uh, when this uniformly distributed load is not present uh, then the m 1 that is equals to 1 cross x. So, this case uh, is better to neglect this, this portion of the uniformly distributed load 
and then what uh, do we do? We, we have already the formula what we usually use to find out and that formula we are uh, using and uh, putting the values like m 0, m 0 is uh, w x square by 2, 1 by e i is there and x is there, this m 1 value that gets multiplied w uh, by 2 e i comes out. We do integrate from 0 to l, here uh, the length of the beam is l not mentioned, only mentioned in the text. So, visually we can mention again this way. this is L. So, uh, with this if we that is the reason the integration is considered from 0 to L and x is considered from this this end to the left word that is the x x to the power cube by d x and it is a simple way x 4 and by 4 will come and w L to the power 4 by 8 e i is the deflection. This is following unit load method. Now, if we try to follow same uh, example, try to solve same example using dummy load method, what can be done is that we can, we can solve uh, the similar way only we need to consider uh, del u del p f and instead of applying unit load, we will need to apply the load p f. Now, m x uh, is equals to w x square by 2 plus p f x because of this p f load. So, uh, we need to the, the total strain energy as we substitute this value here, this is w x square by 2 plus p f x whole square and uh, the constant term is taken out, integration is definitely again carried out for 0 to l d x and then if we carry out further, we have uh, this uh, formula is expanded this way w square x to, to the power 4 by 4. So, this is not there is no nothing of p f. So, this will deriv derivative of this will go to 0. There is one p f, there is one p f. So, what will happen? Uh, uh, this p f will make that p f twice p f x square and while we will put the value of p f equals to 0, this term also will lead to 0. Only remaining term is this one the, because p f will become 1. So, in that case this becomes integration w x cube d x. So, similar way w will come out and it will lead to the same result. So, whether we follow the unit load method or the dummy load method in both the case the answer has to be correct that is what we have learned problem method may differ, but answer should be same. So, the first uh, problem for today's uh, discussion is complete, we will we'll go forward for the next one. Okay. This example is a different type of example, find the horizontal deflection of the arch shown using unit load method. Okay. So, first we will try unit load method, how the unit load method works uh, in this case. Uh, find the, to, to do that uh, the equations uh, remain same as for the unit load method. Uh, it is the loading is symmetric if you look at it is centrally loaded. So, uh, without any doubt we can easily find out that there the reactions are p by 2 at the two ends. And uh, for unit load method we need to apply one unit load p 1 because this end is supposed to displace whereas, uh, this end is supporting. So, there definitely will be one more reaction and that reaction is shown here. It is not that two unit loads are applied, it, the concept is not that like that, but the concept is to apply one unit load. The loading in the structure is symmetrical about uh, uh, center line. So, that is what just now I mentioned. Moment uh, at any section theta moment at any section theta, if we look at how can you find out 
that is it will have two components one is this will give us the m 0 and this will give us the m 1. So, m 0 if we talk about this is the momentum So, this distance is nothing but one minus r into one minus cos theta, and that is what uh, is given shown here you see and p by 2 is also given. So, accordingly we get the m 0 com part for m 1. Uh, the arm is this much and this is nothing but r sin theta and since it is r sin theta we without doubt we put that 1 into r sin theta and d s is equals to definitely r d theta. So, that is the thing is put in, into the in this form this this is uh, the value is put and we get this value. Okay. So, one thing you must uh, notice that there is a 2 in, in front and the limit is from 0 to pi by 2 we are not considering 0 to pi. The uh, structure is symmetric that is the reason if we find out the energy up to this and then make a double of that that gives us the total energy. That is what is done here. So, 1 by E i p by 2 r into this portion is because of m 0 and the other portion r sin theta this is m 1. So, while we put these two value and we need to carry out the integration that is the remaining part need to do. So, uh, in, in unit load method we need not to differentiate. So, if we follow steps sin theta multiplied by 1 minus cos theta is the only variable part and p r cube p r r this r also is there. So, makes p r cube by E i uh, outside and then we need to carry out uh, the integration this is sin 2 theta will become and uh, then that is the reason 1 fourth and 1 1 more half will come because of the 2 theta while we do integration minus plus is because of the integration sin 2 cos and here also sin 2 cos plus has become minus we put the boundary um, values 0 to pi integration limits 0 to pi by 2, 0 to pi by 2 and accordingly this gives us 1 and this gives us minus 1 by 2 and it finally leads that the end deflection, this end deflection if it deflects like this. then this deflection is p r cube by twice E i. So, that is what we have solved and uh, let us move to next slide for another method the other method what we can use to solve this. Okay, same problem we will try using dummy load method. Uh, in this uh, dummy load method not only that uh, we will solve using dummy load method, we will also 
solve it without considering the symmetry. So, it becomes the equation becomes little bit lengthy and we need to solve it. So, let us try once uh, using that method also how what the result comes and we will see we will solve in that process. So, let us follow it is same only since P f is applied one more P f reaction P f is there. Since we are not considering symmetry, we, we need to consider moment at this part also that is the reason phi is defined to help us to understand and after phi is defined, we can easily uh, solve the equation. Let m f is moment due to horizontal force p f if this is the thing as we have discussed earlier. This is the arm for P f and uh, that is R sin theta and uh, similarly, if m r is the moment due to the reaction that becomes P by 2 r sin into 1 minus cos theta. So, m p is the moment due to the vertical load due to this load due to this load and if we talk about that load it is becoming minus of p r cos phi minus of p r cos phi it is acting this way all moments those are acting this way on this section it is this way or this section it is this way whereas, this is acting in this way that is the reason minus f has come and p is the load r cos phi is this angle and that is trans, uh, transformed to theta as cos theta. So, that is the I think you can easily get why it is like that from 180 degree minus phi and that way we get it. Okay. So, the total energy total strain energy is here 1 by 2 E i m f plus m r whole square r d theta plus this is for 0 to pi since as we said we are not going to consider the symmetry that is the reason in two parts the integration is take considered from here to here one part where p f that 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 m p part is not there and from here to here one more pi by 2 to pi where m p part is there. So, that square is considered similar way it is expanded both part this is the first part and this is the up to pi by 2 this is up to pi pi by 2 to pi and then again uh, the derivation is considered. And uh, if we go for the derivation uh, this part is uh, better we can easily concentrate. So, we are supposed to do de derive it with respect to what I say that uh, m sorry p f. So, uh, this is noted here this is going to be 0 why this is becoming 0 because uh, as we will put that p f is equals to 0 here p f will become we put 0 that is the reason this part will become 0 this is automatically 0 this m p is also automatically 0 that is because m p does not contain any p f this uh, is the part will remain that m r this part m f and p f will remain and here also m p part will remain this is also this also will go to 0. So, similar way if we do this also we can get as twice m r twice m r del m f this part only remains, but these two will not be there this will be something like this and will be 0. Now, what we have done we have put the values of the moment what we have uh, found out here those moments values are put here p by 2 r 1 minus cos theta this is this part and uh, r square sin theta uh, is 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 this one 
m f del m f by del p f and it continues uh, that way. So, in this case also what we have we substitute uh, these values and we get this equation. Okay. So, uh, this equation is repeated from the previous page and if we simplify that uh, it becomes uh, I guess there is a mistake of this r square this because this r r square and r makes it r to the power 4 uh, probably this is a mistake you will please ignore that otherwise it is not going to be p r cube in the previous page also that mistake is there please uh, ignore consider that this is not there. So, uh, p r cube by 2 e i comes out then sin theta minus half sin 2 theta it becomes and similarly from the other one also p r cube by 2 i z i is coming out and then we, we carry out the integration sin theta becomes minus cos theta. Similar way plus 1 by 4 cos 2 theta 0 to pi by 2 this is pi by 2 to pi cos becomes minus sin sorry sin becomes minus cos and here also sin becomes minus cos 1 by 2 comes comes out and uh, similarly we get it this way. So, uh, uh, I think uh, there are also some, some uh, typographical mistakes are there uh, you may consider this this two part if, if you carry out this integration you will definitely get this value. So, I, I would suggest uh, you carry out uh, the part and uh, check whether these two equations are written correctly or not, but finally, the deflection what we see is uh, correct. So, if we for move forward for the, the last example, uh, this example we have a curved beam uh, in this curved beam what we do we, we, we need to find out uh, the deflection the downward deflection of this free end and the rotation of the free end rotation is considered in this way the rotation how it is taking place. So, let us see first uh, here to how the deflection is coming. Uh, it is a bending and twisting problem unless both are there, uh, there would not be any translation downward as well as rotation. That is the reason following unit load method we have both uh, the energy due to moment as well as energy due to torsion. And once uh, we, we do that, once we carry out that the m 0 this is the important part here is to find out m 0 m 1 and t 0 t 1. So, let us uh, try to see how uh, which arm is taking and which part is being considered for m 0 and m 1 that is the most interesting part Le remaining part it is simple uh, calculus I think you can easily do uh, probably better than me. So, uh, th that you can easily check and find out the values finally, what you are getting. So, uh, to do that let us to con we are to concentrate to find out the m 0. First, uh, we have a load p acting downward in this particular case uh, we are not considering this t or there is no t present at this tip it is because of only the applied load p. So, do not get confused with that t is shown here just to 
to give you the idea which way and how the torsion may act and how the phi is acting. In this uh, problem, the, there is no T is applied. So, what how the moment is acting in this particular section? If we look at it at this section, this P is acting from here downward. So, the arm for moment is actually this portion and that is nothing but the r sin theta this component. So, that is the reason p r sin theta we get for m 0 and for m 1 that is nothing but while uh, unit load is applied here removing the all other loads we get the r sin theta. Now, about t 0, t 0 because of p what is the torsion at this particular section. So, in this case particular case actually this is the point where p is acting downward and what is the arm? Arm is actually this much. and this is nothing but 1 minus cos theta multiplied by r. So, that is what that uh, T 1 we get uh, P r 1 minus cos theta P is acting downward r 1 into 1 minus cos theta is this and P equals to 1 gives us the applied torque is increasing the tip deflection. This is interesting point. See, P is being producing a torsion which uh, is uh, which is moving the tip downward. That is the reason we say in this particular case the torque what is produced by this P at any section which is theta apart is actually increasing the deflection vertical deflection downward. So, with this concept while we have all this value while we have this formula we are supposed to put that those values here and those values are put here P r sin theta uh, r sin theta and then uh, 1 by g j the for the torsion part is also it is put and then uh, the simple integration is carried out and that gives us that delta is equals to p r cube by e i pi by 4 plus p r cube by g j 3 pi by 4 minus 2. So, with this consideration let us uh, move to the other part of the problem that is uh, rotation of the end section A. Okay. So, here uh, we have uh, considered uh, some additional drawing we have prepared for better understanding. What we need to see is uh, we need to apply one torsional load, torsional unit load uh, in the direction of in the direction where uh, the theta is increasing and uh, accordingly uh, we can find out whether it is what is the value of phi or the end rotation. So, for the rotation of end A an unit torque is applied at the end bending and torsion due to external load P this we have uh, already found out for the external load P. Uh, the other load is the most interesting in this part of example that is moment and torsion due to unit torque applied for the indicated rotation R. 
Now, you see we are applying this unit torque, why it is in this direction? Because this is tangential, tangential here and this is coming from bottom to the up, from it, it comes from bottom to the up and that is the reason following right hand screw system, this is the vector. Now, uh, this vector is applied here as it will go further, these two components will change following this arc. If we one component will create a bending and the other component will create the torsion or induce the torsion. So, if this that is the reason two separate colors are used here. If we make a component this way, this is uh, this is the bending component and this bending component is again increasing the deflection downward and if it is increasing the deflection downward that component will be this is one this component is uh, one sin theta uh, th because uh, see as we as we increase this is increasing so this angle is the theta this is theta so if uh, that is increasing so, this component bending component is a sin theta and the torsion component is cos theta. Uh, so, the bending component 1 unit torque and sin theta that is m 1 is acting there and uh, cos theta is the component fine 1 is the uh, magnitude of the force is fine, but why is minus? That minus is because you see this is the way it is applied this is actually uh, in the opposite direction, it is acting opposite to the other torque. That means, uh, the torque, uh, the way we have considered previously, in the previous example, uh, it is acting opposite to that and uh, that is the reason it has been considered as minus. Uh, so, in this, this sense, we can see that this point will go up because of this torsion, this point will go up because as I said, as I repeat, this is coming going down and then coming up. So, that is the reason minus has come here and accordingly we have put those values P r 1 minus cos theta multiplied by minus cos theta r d theta and this is the bending moment part and then if we integrate, we get the value of phi, phi is, is uh, in this direction considering this is positive while it is rotating this way. If this total value is positive, we will be considering that this is rotating this way. So, p r square pi by 4 e i minus p r square by g j 1 minus pi by 4 is the rotation value. So, with this uh, solving three examples, we, we conclude uh, today's lecture. Uh, the examples uh, are very good. You may solve the same examples. Uh, references for this is similar to or same as we have done previously. And uh, with this, uh, we, we come to the end of uh, the lecture slide today and um, thank you for attending this lecture. We will move forward for the next lecture. Thank you.